I wanted to bring today's episode to the podcast talking all about the supplements you need to know when you're on the fertility journey. Many of us are taking a boatload of supplements, but do we know if those supplements are actually harming our fertility, if they're actually right for us? Today, we are talking about the multi-billion dollar supplement industry and really um, what you, what can go wrong with selecting supplements, how to know which supplements to take. And we're talking about the foundational supplements you need to know right now when you are on the fertility journey. Excited for you to listen. Let's go. Hey, Katie, excited to have you back on the podcast. Hello. Yeah, thanks for having me. Awesome. So today we're digging into um, supplements and really why we use them. Um, but just sort of a first little caveat thing. Many people over the years of doing this have kind of said, give me, you know, do you have a pill for that? What's what's a supplement I can take? Sort of that magic pill, which it it, it doesn't exist, right? So you take supplements, but you always need to do the targeted diet and lifestyle changes, making changes to your diet that's right for you, working on your sleep, making sure you move not too much, but not too little um, and working on your stress because, you know, the supplements are helpful, but using them alone is, 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 you know, will not serve you. And it can just sort of be an expensive thing by not making all those, those targeted changes. What's your take? Yeah. I think that's such an important message, Sarah, because um, we live in a bit of a a fast paced world these days. And, um, I dare say probably an over medicated world as well and and so the attitude I think for uh, for lots of people is that yeah well there must be a pill that can fix this because it's kind of what we've been taught um, and what we're not used to is going back to those fundamentals of health uh, that we know make a difference and the truth is most of us aren't eating uh, the best diet in the world and aren't moving our bodies in the right way and have sedentary lifestyles um and are like stressed out to the max and you know these kind of type a high achieving personalities where it's just always go 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 uh and uh and and, and like loads of people aren't, aren't getting enough sleep and loads of people are proud of not getting enough sleep as well and like loads of people boast about how little sleep they've got and uh actually we we you know yes supplements are and can be really really important and we'll, we'll dig into that today but you cannot out supplement a bad diet and a bad lifestyle you have to address the fundamentals first. Absolutely. We just got off our clinical um, uh, mastermind. We meet weekly with our team. We were talking about is it is your job to sleep and you wouldn't call in sick on your, well, you could call in sick on your job, but not repeatedly, you know, for sleep sometimes we're, we're going to bed at, you know, one or two in the morning for, for weeks. And maybe that's just our habit. So yeah, mm-hmm. sleep number one. <laughs> Hundred percent, yeah, yeah. I was. We had a storm last night here, and uh, and I was I was awake between the hours of two and four a.m. because of this silly storm. And I was like, I'm so infuriated by it today because you you really notice a big difference, oh, yeah. like when you've had even just one night of, of bad sleep. And there was some research that said that you know that that in young, like healthy young men, when they kind of did a, a, a research where they deprive them of uh, just one hour less sleep per night there were huge ranging implications for their health, like both short term and long term, like sleep is just so important. Yeah, I had my castor oil pack on all last night. So I slept like a baby. Oh, nice. <laughs> I was, I was Amazing. Cool. <laughs> I'm jealous. I should have had my castor oil pack on. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, so the supplement uh, industry is like 123 you know, US billion dollar industry just in the US alone. Um, and so, yeah, it's big business. Um, and so th- there's a lot of supplements on the market. It can be like super confusing. Maybe you go to your, you know, your local drugstore or wh- wherever you may, may go to get your supplements, but really are those supplements, you know, right for you? So, you know, we're always recommending um, professional grade supplements that are um, free of top allergens and dyes and really uh, making sure that they're FDA registered and also that um, good manufacturing practices so that GMPs is is practiced. So it's really important because otherwise, you know, if you're getting your supplement off of, off of Amazon, you could really run into some quality, some quality issues. And maybe they're saying it's one thing, but it's something completely different. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really important to remember. And I actually just took a video yesterday, Sarah, funny uh, talking about this now that um, I was in my local supermarket and I was in the um, 
when I was in the, 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 the you know, the toiletry section and I took a video of like these shelves and shelves and shelves of supplements and I was I was looking at them and I was like these are all <laughs> rubbish like you know that there, there were like a couple there were one or two uh brands in there that or name you know products that I would trust um and the rest of them were just like synthetic nonsense that were just so full of fillers and this is what is you know widely available to the public and I always say to people if you're taking the wrong supplements best case scenario is that you're just giving yourself really expensive pee and worst case scenario is that it could actually be doing harm so uh you know it's it's really worth getting it right when it comes to supplementing yeah, so our so the professional grade supplements you want to make sure they're free of the fillers, the binders, the synthetic ingredients like gluten. We see a lot of our clients are intolerant to gluten, and there's you know you're taking a supplement every day, and it may have gluten, dyes, preservatives, soy, dairy, um, and chemical additives. So a lot of those things are in the supplements. We see like a common one you see a lot is soy um, and gluten hidden that you didn't even know you were taking. Um, and then all those sort of preservatives and things. So it's, it's really important to, uh, know what you're taking. (laughs) Yeah. And it's, and it's the same with foods, right? You know, lots, lots of these, um, mass produced kind of like uh cheap cheap supplements or cheaply produced supplements uh they've got the 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 manufacturers have got two things in mind the first thing is how can we make this as cheap as possible and so then they're using the the kind of the fillers and the binders and the second is shelf life and so they want they want that that shelf stability um which again often comes with uh using kind of these these cheap fillers and additives uh to help stabilize that so you know you you, uh, the good good quality supplements they're not always expensive but you know you, they are one of those things where you do tend to get what you pay for um and it's because you're paying for the fact that there's not a load of rubbish in them mm-hmm. and so for that we have a um for the um anyone that's on the the um pregnancy journey um foundational supplements being a prenatal vitamin D3K2, um, magnesium, CoQ10, or ubiquinol, uh, ubiquinol, probiotic, and omega. So we're going to take you through these supplements, kind of um, why it's important when you're on um, the fertility journey to, to take these supplements and kind of what we're looking for um, with the supplement. So let's talk about the um, prenatal. Um, what are we looking for um, on, uh, with that one? Yeah, so I, I think the, the the number one thing to think about when we're considering prenatal um, is is the folate, um, because that that is you know if you if anyone goes to their doctor and says right we're thinking about trying for a baby, uh, generally speaking the advice would be um, well to take folic acid and certainly on um, here in the UK on our on our national health service website it's advised to take the folic acid for three months uh, prior to trying and that's because we know. Um, about the, the the risk factors to 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 a baby uh, in terms of risk of miscarriage and and um, uh, conditions like spina bifida um, in terms of actually that 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 fetal development. So having adequate folate is really important. Now there's a bit of a um, a bit of confusion around the folate folic acid uh, piece and and you know really what what we do uh, in the prenatals that we uh, recommend is we 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 tend to recommend a methylated folate because uh, it's in its most absorbable form uh, to the body um, and so it's kind of it's quite well utilized by by the body so uh, so that's one thing that we'll look at but really when we're looking at a prenatal it's just worth bearing in mind. So prenatal is, is another word for a multivitamin, right? So if, if someone refers to, to a prenatal, they're talking about a multivitamin. And some people might think, oh, well, you know, I, I, I have a good diet and all of these kind of things. So why do I need to uh, add that in? Uh, well, actually, it's really important because what we do know is that A, uh, lots of us are, are deficient or at least insufficient in a lot of our basic uh, nutrients and our micronutrients. And that's partly because a lot of us 
may think we're having a good diet but but aren't eating as much of those micronutrients as we could be and it's partly because of modern modern farming practices and so lots of the soil uh, is depleted nowadays in in lots of those essential minerals um and each of those micronutrients that's provided in a multivitamin is uh, ha- has a unique role to play for the body, not just in creating a healthy pregnancy, but in creating a healthy you as well and making you feel as good as you possibly can uh, when you're trying to conceive and also during pregnancy. So, um, so you know, a broad uh, spectrum, high quality multivitamin can really do wonders for addressing some of the balances that we often find uh, depleted. Yeah, and then studies have shown that a prenatal vitamin with folate can reduce the risk of early miscarriage. Many times people potentially are taking that, the folic acid one, which, um, you know, we always recommend a methyl methyl folate. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so so the the folate piece is is, uh, of particular importance. Um, And I think for anyone coming uh, or listening to this podcast who... Uh, has had uh, miscarriages in the past or who is um, has been trying for a long time or has that kind of unexplained infertility or who has had lots of uh, rounds of IVF that haven't worked then the folate piece of the equation is a really important one to consider absolutely and the next one we have um, so we recommend obviously the prenatal for women and then for men is the the men uh, the men's multi. Um, and then there's lots of um, evidence to recommend the fact that um, having adequate uh, nutritional supplements for men is really good for their fertility, for the sperm quality and motility. Anything you wanted to say there about the why it's important for men to have a, a, a proper multi? Yeah, I mean, look, I think the thing is with, with sperm quality um, is it is so malleable and it's so um it, 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 the, the sperm is something that is produced um by the male body or by the testicles all all the time right and so um it's something that is renewed constantly so unlike the the female uh, gametes which are our eggs which is something that we're born with you know, there's there's there, there are things that we can do to help with our egg quality, but to some extent, there's only so much you can do. But sperm is is newly produced all the time, and that presents a real opportunity um, for the quality of it to be improved um, by our nutrition, by our lifestyle, and so all of the things that are included in a really good quality. Um, uh, multi uh, vitamin or multi vitamin and mineral supplement uh, for, for for males. They are all things that can improve those sperm parameters, and each of the sperm parameters, the sperm count, the motility, and the morphology. They are all things that can be influenced by the diet, by the lifestyle. So a lot of the time, it can make a huge difference just putting um, putting that multi vitamin in and getting enough of those nutrients that the sperm need to be produced properly. So in some ways, this is going to sound really strange, but in some, you know, lots of women feel really disheartened when their partner's sperm comes back as like not looking so great. But the way I often think about it is actually great. Like we know we can do so much with that. So, you know, let's let's take that information. And genuinely, like, you know, for, for, for the vast majority of people that I work with, if if they if the man measures his 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 sperm one month and then dedicates three months uh, to this stuff, he will like he will always see improvements. And so, the, you know, these these approaches absolutely work. Yeah, we see it all the time. That's why it's really important that so we so we coach we uh, coach couples uh, because the female partner may be taking a whole heap of supplements, making all these diet and lifestyle changes, and the man either he's been told his semen is totally fine, or maybe he's told it's not fine. But then you know there's still stigma and some some um, potential issues there for for men as to why they may not you know, want to make the changes, but literally when you can see the blood chemistry and you can see the semen analysis, and then we actually see within a short period of time, 90 days, when you make these targeted changes, and in this case, including, you know, including including a a multivitamin, this can really help um, make changes. So it's important for you and your partner to do the changes together um, and look at targeted supplements. Absolutely. Yeah. It is not all on the woman, even though it often feels that way. Yeah. 
And don't coach your partner. Yeah, we don't recommend that. It's not about nagging, taking your supplements. That's why it's important that he recognizes, you know, that he has to need to make the changes and then he can have a coach that can help him with his own health goals. Because that can and just that's, result that's what in I love disaster. About that is, is that it does it, it, you know, does include the male partners routinely. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the next one we have is an omega. Um, and so this is for both men and women um, to take this. And uh, so why is it important for them to, to take an omega? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> why is it not important to take an omega? It's 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 uh the, the benefits of omega-3 are are just so far reaching. And um, you know, essentially what it boils down to is that when so omega-3 is a is a fatty acid, and uh, one of the key indicators for our overall health is um our balance of, of fatty acids and the ratio of omega-3s to omega-6s. Now the modern diet tends to be pretty high in omega-6 and pretty low in omega-3 um you know that the omega-3s typically are are, are are found in the oily fish um and you know lots lots of people barely eat fish nowadays and even for those who do we need to be careful about not eating too much because of the the heavy metal contamination so um a, a, an omega-3 supplement i mean there's there's not many supplements that i think most people would benefit from taking but omega-3 is one of them uh but as with anything else that the the quality of an omega-3 really does matter um but not only for kind of general health reducing inflammation so so omega-3 is a powerful anti-inflammatory um and we know that one of the biggest underlying drivers for fertility issues and for health issues in general is inflammation this chronic inflammation um and so that the omega-3 is a really potent anti-inflammatory uh which 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 works wonderfully it's also fantastic for our brain health so coming back to that stress piece that we spoke about earlier like how many of us have got like massively stressful lives right it's it's really um it's the the modern way of living is naturally quite stressful lots of people struggle with anxiety with low mood um and you know there is tons of research out there that that shows that omega-3 so omega-3 has two components dha and epa um and and they both are really um major contributors to brain health and if we've got a healthy brain not only are we feeling better but our hormones are going to be produced uh, more prolifically and everything you know it's like a well-oiled machine literally because you're using an oil um and so you know the, the omega-3s are really really important so that's in terms of you and kind of thinking about your hormones and everything else but equally as important then is actually when a conception occurs that that developing embryo developing into a fetus needs so that the 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 fetal brain needs the dhea like it's really really important for fetal development um so again lots of us don't have that balance of fatty acids right in our diet so taking the omega-3 can just help to tip the the balance uh, in the right direction yeah, making sure it has the DHA. I, I, DHA. I always want to say DHA. DHA. Uh, yeah. There you go. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it's important for the hormones and also for the production of healthy uh, sperm and men. So it's it again is one of our found you know our foundational supplements. Looking at you know an omega and really the caveat out there is some of the ones that we see because there's and again there's tons on the market with uh, you want to make sure the, those heavy metals um, and the, then the right source of fish too. Absolutely, absolutely. And and it's one of those ones where you can buy super cheap um, fish oil supplements. Um, Honestly, I wouldn't recommend it. Oils uh, and, and fats in general have a really very delicate balance because oils um can um can oxidate very easily um and so oils like omega-3 they are quite delicate and it doesn't take much for them to tip over into oxidation and then once they have been oxidated then they actually become more inflammatory than anti-inflammatory 
So fats and, and oils are one of those things where they have the potential to do amazing things for our health, but they also have the potential to be really quite harmful to our health. So omega threes is one of those things where it's really worth getting uh, the quality right, and, and and the high quality, high potency fish oils um, are our best. And really, what we're looking for in terms of our sources are the smaller the species that it's come from the less contaminated with heavy metals it's going to be um so you know with if we're thinking about things like anchovies uh, or even krill uh, then you know that's uh, that's that's going to be far less in terms of metals but most good and reputable supplement companies will have a quite a rigorous process for kind of checking uh, for metals and making sure that the oils are pure Absolutely. And the next one we have is vitamin uh, D3 and K2. This is something that we regularly see with our couples, actually, with people having low vitamin D. And the conventional uh, reference range will say anything um, above 30 is good, whereas the functional reference range, you want it between 60 to 80. So we see a lot of people in the teens and the single digits or in the 20s. And that is not optimal for fertility. So it's really important to uh, and this is for both, this, this one is for both male and female uh, partners that are on the fertility journey. Important to get your um, blood chemistry done. So as part of our fab fertile method, we uh, do a blood chemistry review, not to diagnose, but to educate. And again, we see those levels that are off. So it's important then to supplement, but then you want to retest as well. So even though, even if you're living in a sunny climate or most of us that that aren't, especially for, you know, during the, during the winter months and the short, the shorter days, it's still sunshine is, is your best option, but also, um, an, an additional supplement with it is, is key. Generally speaking, um, Sarah, when our, uh, as a general rule of thumb for people in the Northern hemisphere, like you and I, um, as, as the months uh, of the year kind of get into these winter months, the autumn, winter, um, a general rule of thumb is that if your shadow is longer than your body, then you're probably not going to be absorbing much vitamin D from the sunshine. So, um, you know, there's there's lots of things around our, our modern lifestyle, again, uh, whereby um, we're, we're probably not absorbing so much. And one of those things is even like use of sun cream uh, over the summer. You know, we, we use sun cream to protect our skin with a kind of in the right, most well-meaning way possible. Um, but what that then does is, is block out those UVA, those UVB rays, um, which, uh, which are what we can synthesize vitamin d from so um lots of us even in the summer months aren't getting enough vitamin d from the sunshine uh, lots of us aren't eating sources of vitamin d um and lots of us are um uh, lo lo lots of us have got genetic variants whereby we don't absorb uh, and, uh, and and produce enough vitamin D or, or kind of uh, adequate levels of vitamin D. So there's lots of layers to the vitamin D piece. Um, and, you know, it really is worth uh, getting your levels checked out because that is one of the things that in the blood work, it's one of the most common things that we see um, sitting suboptimally. Um, so yeah, vit vitamin D is 100% is one of the, one of the, um, the, the biggest things to think about and particularly if you are uh, thinking about going into an IVF journey uh, it's really a good idea to kind of make sure that your your vitamin d levels are balanced absolutely and so vitamin d is a a pro hormone so you can just talk about it's a literally it's important for to balance estrogen and um uh, and for men also to increase testosterone and also increasing libido in both sexes. You wouldn't even really think of vitamin D being able to do that, but that's what it does. So it's super important for anyone on the fertility journey and actually also for anyone um, you know, looking to, to, to have optimal health. Anything you wanted to say on that? Yeah, so it's it's the, the reason that the uh, vitamin D is so um uh, helpful for fertility is is yeah because of this hormone synthesis and its involvement and vitamin d really if we think about hormones in as being chemical messengers then vitamin d has uh hormone like properties in that it does help our body give and receive these chemical messages um and so really really important for those sex hormone uh production um the other thing that we see a lot uh, that vitamin D is really important in is uh, is immune function. And you might think, 
immune function has nothing to do with uh, with fertility, but actually our immune system has everything to do with everything. Because when we're thinking about the, the that concept of, of, of low grade or chronic inflammation that I spoke about earlier, which is one of the biggest drivers for more or less all of the non-communicable health conditions that we see in the modern world, um, it's it, inflammation is part of the immune response. So vitamin D um, can help, is an, is, it's an immunomodulator. Um, and, you know, there's tons of research that came out, uh, uh, you know, off the back of the COVID pandemic, um, whereby people who were suffered most with COVID symptoms and, and kind of, you know, the people that were dying and really, really sick in hospital. So many of those people had low vitamin D levels. So um, and it's also really important in the context of autoimmunity. And we see autoimmunity a lot, uh, highly uh, linked to fertility issues, to miscarriage, unfortunately as well and so we just um the, the vitamin d is is it's just always worth checking to check that your levels are optimal um and and if it's not then like it can be really easily rectified yeah and you don't want to have the vitamin um d3 by itself you want to make sure it's with a k2 with a k2 supplement to make sure it stays away from the bones and keeping it out of the soft tissue so um that's one thing i think many people get wrong where they're like oh, i'm just taking a plain vitamin d yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So the K2 helps to actually just just get it where, where it needs to go. And a big a big role of the vitamin D is is in the absorption of calcium. Right. And so those two go hand in hand and the vitamin K2 uh, helps to support that job, too. And then also choosing the supplement, um, we want to make sure it's got this. Um, I'm going to have you pronounce it that uh, cola. <laughs> Oh, a co- co- colecalciferol. <laughs> there you go. And why is it yeah. important to have that? Um, so it's that that essentially is vitamin D three, and so um, vitamin D three is the um, talking about absorbable forms of, of different nutrients in the same way that we were talking about folic acid versus folate earlier. Uh, vitamin D three is is really the the the, the most usable form uh, of D three. So some of the again some of the cheaper uh, supplements might be like uh, D two, um, and really it's not it's not going to be that helpful for you to take d2 it might for some people but um you know for, for, for most people the d3 is going to be better and the next one we have is coq coq10 or ubiquinol um so ubiquinol has been shown to in, inhibit uh, dna oxidation so um and protecting the genetic code so and there's also a study from um, fertility and sterility that showed um a daily supplement of uh, CoQ10 can actually help with um, egg quality and fertilization rates. So I think many people in the, uh, if you're on the fertility journey, are taking CoQ10 or ubiquinol. Um, can you talk about, you know, why this is important and I guess the form as well? Yeah, so so the, the CoQ10 it is something that is produced naturally um, within our own bodies, um, but it's 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 a it can be part of the reason that it's it's beneficial in uh, in women who are uh, closer in age to to the menopausal years is because CoQ10 naturally depletes with age, i.e. that the aging process in our bodies uh, can can deplete our our CoQ10 production and our CoQ10 levels. Um, so the CoQ10 has like. Um, it's it's stored in, in our mitochondria in our cells, which is it's known as like the uh, it's almost like our cells battery, and it's like the, the energy center for our cells. So CoQ10 is massively involved in 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 energy production, but it's also really protective. So it acts as an it has a, a protective antioxidant effect um, on on our cells and, and, and particularly on our gametes, which in, in women's case would be our, our eggs and also for, for sperm cells, cells as well. Um, so really helpful, you know, when we're thinking particularly about egg quality. I mentioned earlier that with regards to egg quality, you know, unfortunately, unlike sperm where there's loads you can do there's a limited amount that you can do to support the quality of the eggs because we have them from birth but we can there's you know what we want to do is is protect them as much as possible and we want to what we're protecting them from is oxidative stress and that can come from all sorts of things it can come from toxic burden it can come from the foods that we're eating it can come from inflammatory responses and intolerances it can come from uh that even the air that we breathe and it can come from our, our age 
stage. So, uh, you know, the, what the CoQ10 does is really just help to actually act as a, as a protective function um, for, for those for those gametes. And, and also, as I say, it just helps with, with energy levels. Like, again, how many people come to us saying that they're exhausted? Um, and so the CoQ10 can be really, really helpful with that. Um, now, there's, there's, again, as we've everything there's different forms um what we know is that that ubiquinol um as opposed to ubiquinone is the form that is kind of ready to use by the body it doesn't have to go through a conversion so it's you know we we tend to uh recommend that people take the ubiquinone uh, ubiquinol rather uh, <laughs> so so that their 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 bodies can just you know it's ready to use yeah, so that's U B I Q U I N O L. That's the one you want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, and yeah, and also good for sperm, right? For helping with um, concentration, motility, and um, morphology. Yeah, absolutely. So that's why we tend to offer it for for both partners. It's one of those things that is beneficial for both. And the last one we have here is a probiotic. Um, this is, yeah, this is a, a key one that really everyone should be taking a probiotic, no matter if you're on the fertility journey or not. But um, especially if you're on the fertility journey, um, it's super important. Uh, people would think, well, why am I working on my gut health? But that's like the whole the whole center of your health. So, um, and in this case, also um, probiotic um, for women, helping the health of the vagina, which we do um, vaginal um, microbiome testing. And we see a lot of um, um, dysbiosis or, or healing opportunities on the vaginal microbiome test too. So, but as far as a probiotic, um, what are we looking for there? Yeah, I mean, it's it's you're absolutely right, Sarah. That that the gut health should be at the forefront of everybody's minds, um, regardless of whether they're trying to conceive or where, wherever they're at on on their health and their life journey. Because what what we know now about the gut is that um, our immune system starts in the gut our hormones are modulated and and, and detoxified in the gut the gut is our main source for absorbing and assimilating nutrients that we get from food and supplements um the gut is has has a direct connection to the brain um and it's 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 also involved in our inflammatory and our anti-inflammatory responses in terms of the microbes that live in our gut so our gut really, you know, we, we, we always, we learned in nutrition college, you know, first start with the gut because that is, that is the foundation of all of our health. Like, you know, someone could have the best diet in the world, but if they're not absorbing those nutrients properly, then, you know, it's, it's not going to be doing them anywhere near as good as if they had like a really nice, robust gut health. Um, and that is something that at Fab Verto, uh, you you know, you guys are checking uh, for more or less everyone that comes through the doors, right, is doing these, these stool tests to like have a look and really check in with the gut health. What is a really, really nice thing to do, um, you know, because the, the, what the stool test allows us to do is become really personalised and really nuanced to that individual um, and, 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 uh, and, and do a targeted approach for them. But as while we're kind of, uh while we're while we're almost waiting on that and and uh while we're kind of building everyone up um what is like the broad spectrum uh way of of, of supporting the gut is by uh taking a good quality probiotic um and you know those those good quality probiotics what a probiotic means is that you're physically putting in uh the the bacteria the microbes uh, that have a positive impact on our bodies uh and so you know, for a lot of people, their, their, their levels of microbes are either depleted so that, you know, the good bacteria are depleted and some of the more problem causing bacteria can often become elevated. And so what we're doing by including a probiotic for everybody is actually just helping to address some of those imbalances while we then go in and kind of investigate what else might be going on. And, and then we can be a bit more um, targeted and the vaginal microbiome piece of the puzzle is really significant. And this is one that, you know, 
we're learning more and more about now with the, the vaginal microbiome and its impact on uh, not just fertility uh, for trying naturally, but um, but IVF success rates and even miscarriage rates. Because what we're learning is that that vaginal ecology, the environment that we're seeing in the vagina and in the uterus, um, is, uh, is is really significant and it matters um, for, for 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 actually growing a baby in. Um, so you know if there is a dysbiosis i.e an imbalance of bacteria an imbalance of microbes in the vaginal tract uh, which by the way is very close to to the rectum and so it's it's there can be crossovers between the two um you know we we again we want to make sure that that is right so you know really important to to get some strains of bacteria in um uh, you know through through supplements so that we can we know we're also starting to address some of those balances in the vaginal tract too yeah and katie and i did a deep dive into the doesn't sound good but <laughs> deep dive into the vagina <laughs> we did a deep dive into the, <laughs> the vaginal microbiome um so definitely check out that episode that katie and i did um so you can learn more about that and really why the important especially if you've got you know recurrent utis um bacterial vaginosis i'm sorry bacterial bacterial vaginosis um thrush miscarriage anyone on the fertility journey looking at the health of your um the vaginal microbiome is key and so you want to make sure so the so the probiotics doing a, a, a good having a good probiotic can set you up for a healthy vagina a healthy womb which then helps with fertilization and implant uh, implantation so it's important not just to grab one off the shelf you want to do have a professional grade one that is um of a high quality mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. And uh, also for, for men as well, it's important for um, helping with oxidative stress, which then helps with um, testosterone production, which then all helps with sperm health. So the probiotic for both men and women is is for, for, for both of you to take it is key. And so any final thoughts today on these foundational supplements for fertility, Katie? Yeah, I think it's 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 just that reminder, isn't it, that um there are that there there are some things that are going to be helpful for most people and what what you guys have, have created is a really robust um uh, a, a robust starting point that is going to be beneficial for everybody and then what's happening then in in fab fertile is we we do digging so we have this really strong starting platform and then we become more and more nuanced as the program continues and so the more we find out about you through you know our um our, our the, the consultations with nutritionists and uh, and then the 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 lab testing that we do which is really robust the more pieces of the puzzle we get into place then it becomes more and more targeted and more and more unique to you as an individual um so you know that's that's the beautiful thing about it and so that's when these these supplements start to really tie in uh to to doing exactly that supplementing all of the other work that you're doing around around the food the lifestyle uh the sleep the stress etc yeah, and the good news is with low AMH and high FSH, premature ovarian insufficiency, diminished ovarian reserve, or or anyone on the fertility journey, there are things you can do, and you can take a you can do a DIY approach, which you know you can get so far, um, or you can take a personalized target approach using testing, making sure you're taking the right supplements, you know, that are right for you. So um, awesome! So thanks again, Katie. Thank you.